This is indeed the fourth day of the fifth month 2022. Good morning. This is KBC News Check. And before we begin, let me first apologize for the delay in the beginning of the program. And thank you so much for making time. And uh, of course, today, as we always do on News Check, we do endeavor to ensure that we keep you afloat with all the latest happening in the country and in real time. And also discussing topical issues that affect you wherever you are on even on a national scale. My name is Ben Troy Njue and Susan Thuku will be our sign language interpreter for this uh, first hour that we're going to be discussing a topical issue. Then we'll be discussing matters politics in our second hour. Well, you will, you will agree with me that uh, when it comes to teenage pregnancies in the country, it has been quite rampant. And the situation in Kenya was not very well or very good um, in the recent past, has not been good. But as we were tackling uh, COVID-19, the situation was exacerbated and we have some startling figures actually to be on the right figures we're talking about this year alone the ministry did talk about 45 or 45,000 cases of uh, teenage pregnancies uh, that is something that we should as a country be keen to ensure that uh, these statistics are lowered, if at all. And to be even more into the statistics is that we have over 2,000, out of the 45,000, 2,000 was were as a result of uh, sexual and gender-based violence. That is a discussion that we are going to be looking at. Of course, uh, in the country, there are a number of news making headlines that we are also keeping our eyes peeled for. We have uh, the Azimio, uh, secretary that is uh, scouting for a running mate who will be giving a press that they will be actually today they are at the Serena Hotel. Uh, later on we also have the Northern Kenya MPs presser on insecurity in the region. You have seen the government has even fortified and even issued curfew in some parts of the country, Masabit included. And also our little ones, our form ones are supposed to be joining secondary life and secondary today and we also have digital access program partners and also economic forum running in Kisi. That just uh, some of the uh, news shaping headlines that uh, we will be keen to ensure that we bring you in a more comprehensive report in our news articles. That said, now joining me to discuss this pertinent issue, uh, two ladies, they have been in the industry and ensuring that the girl child is not only empowered but is taken care of for a while. I have two distinguished ladies from the God Will Provide Kenya and today we are discussing matters, teenage pregnancies. On my immediate left, we have uh, uh, Joy Feni Omolo. Karibu sana. Asante sana. And on my extreme left, we have Lucy Mombi Okelo. Thank you. Karibu tema. Thank you so much. And uh, of course, uh, thank you for making time for this show. Thank now, looking at, uh, we talk about teenage pregnancies. There, there are a lot of things that we have to look at. We have to look at the sexual based violence. We also have to look at the abandonment. Uh, others are abandoned. We have to look at uh, the, the, the matters, uh, sanitary pads. We have to look at this holistically this issue holistically but you have been in the industry and you have been able to at least assist tell us how this program began because looking at god we provide kenya it has a lot that it does now when it comes to matters teenage and uh, ensuring that the teenagers are not only taken care of they are protected from all aspects that are detrimental to their good life Thank you so much. It is a big issue that is affecting the entire country. Mm -hmm. And being born and bred in Homer Bay County, mm -hmm. and Homer Bay County being the second leading, it's a sad issue. In one of the projects outside there, mm -hmm. we came across one girl who didn't go to school on a school day. And we gained interest mm -hmm. to ask much, to know what the problem was. At first, she was shy. She didn't tell us the problem. But with time, as we engaged her in conversations, she opened up and said, I'm on my menses. I can't afford sanitary towels. That's why I'm not in school. <laughs> we inquired much. She was staying with a grandmother who was not in a position to afford a pack of sanitary towel. <laughs> when we went back, we thought about it. If in this locality, 
in this location, we have one gun. What about other sub-counties in Homer Bay County? What about other counties in Kenya? So we sat down and discussed. And we said we're not going to sit and watch as this happens. That is how we started this initiative. And, and uh, Lucy, perhaps you can pick from uh, 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 where Joy has left and looking at um, some, some parts of the country, there is abject poverty. Uh, I, I do remember um, uh, speaking with Newton Ogada a couple of um, uh, weeks ago and he said that we are talking about sanitary parts. Yes. But even to put food on the table is an issue. Yeah. Let alone any other thing. But at least you guys were able to come in and chip in. Tell us how from there you began helping and what exactly made you and of course there are some 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 cash inflows and uh, you know you have to spend some money you have to spend some resources you have to move from one place to another tell us how the journey has been okay then after what joy has just explained after we sat down as an organization we involved our director mm -hmm. then we saw there's a need for us to think about the other girl so we we thought of a way where we could we could uh, reach a good number of girls so we knew the only way is to draw schools, both high schools and primary schools. So we visited a few schools within the locality mm -hmm. and we, we talked with the teachers, we engaged the teachers and they, they, they agreed it was a, a good, it was an issue. Mm -hmm. So as we discussed, we saw maybe we can start with what we have. The organization just came in and what the little we had, we started, we bought some sanitary towels mm -hmm. and we visited the first school. Mm -hmm. And then when after the first school, uh, other school had what we were doing mm -hmm. and then they started calling us we also have a need we also have girls who are not coming to school maybe three days four days in a month because they have this issue some of them are living with the grandparents who don't have they they don't think that as a basic need mm -hmm. to a girl they tell them oh we went through that some they could use different things at their time but nowadays things have changed if they use whatever was being used at that time, maybe they feel they're not comfortable, they might soil themselves, mm -hmm. then they, 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 you see there's shame after you see a girl is bleeding. And so we, that's how we came in. So we, we started going to schools, we give them a san sanitary towels, uh, we do a rotation. Maybe we went to a school, a certain school this month, we can give a girl like three packets then we'll rotate back. After three months, we know there's a girl who is still in need. So we say, even if we don't go to that school specifically, we'll send so that the continuity is, is there. So that girl, you know, even if I'm on my message, I'll, I have something to sort me out. And, and, and Lucy, looking at, um, oh Joy, looking at the year 20, uh, 2020, 2021, there have been by far some of the challenges here that Kenyans and young ladies have had, and especially because of COVID-19. How are you able to stay afloat? Because this is a program that you started back then. The COVID came, you're still, you're still remained afloat. You're still doing it today. Have you even had partners to assist in this noble gesture? We've not had partners. We've been doing it from our side, as God will provide. We've engaged some few friends and some well-wishers. And it is our request that if we can get partners so that we stretch our hands and wings to reach as many girls as possible because when we are talking about 45,000 it's not a small number mm -hmm. 45,000 teenage pregnancies it's not a small number because that means 98 girls get pregnant every day mm -hmm. yes and it's a serious situation yeah. and still looking at uh, the startling figures um, information is power, is key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If these young ladies yeah. know that sometimes they are being exploited and the cases by border border operators in, 2000 and, in 2020 and 2021 is that some had actually to do what they had to put not only food and even things like sanitary pads because the situation was so dire yeah. but they lack information they, some don't know that that is abuse. Yeah. 2,000 cases. You're talking about January and February. 2,000 cases of teenage pregnancies based on sexual and gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't provide parts. Mm -hmm. You also have to empower them with information. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing that? Yes, thank you for that. 
Oh, we go to schools. We don't just go there, we give them pads. We do what we call sexual reproductive health education. We don't just engage the girls. We, we take both the boys and the girls who are at the adolescent stage. Because why we picked on the boys? Uh, sometimes you talk to a girl who is pregnant, maybe 14, 15, 16 years old, and when you get to ask, who, who is the father of this child you're carrying? And then they'll tell you, there's a, a, a student who is in form three. So you see, if you just talk to the girls alone, you're missing the point. So you have to tell them, you have to tell the boys, no, you have to abstain from sex. And maybe sometimes you go a little bit far, you talk even about family planning. Yeah, we bring that issue so that when you give them sexual reproductive health, they'll know the need and the, yeah, the need for them to abstain from mm -hmm. the act. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and um, Joy, Lucy has brought about an interesting view to also educate the boys. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about uh, sexual reproduction health, it was tried, you know, for years. We've talked about this should be embedded in the curriculum to ensure that our young boys and girls grow up knowing matters of production and in the country it's like it's never really kicked off because in some countries like developed countries of which we heavily borrow is that this is something that students pupils get as soon as they are in school as soon as they are in their teen years they are taught a lot about reproduction health both boys and girls. That is not happening in the country. It's not happening in the country. And uh, personally, I would point fingers at the parents mm -hmm. because parents have failed big time in matters of sexual reproductive health because they don't talk to their teens about this. Mm -hmm. So when you introduce it in school, it is something that is so new. Mm -hmm. And with the current technology, you get kids watching movies that leads them to early sex without even the parents knowing. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, our teachers get it so hard to start explaining reproductive health to a, s a standard eight pupil. Because this is something that should start immediately the boy turns 13, immediately the girls turn 13, so that it makes it easy for a country to know how to go about it, mm -hmm. yes. And an interesting one, uh, she's talking about parents abscording some of their duties because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my 11-year-old daughter and well, when, when she's at school, perhaps she's taught this, but when she comes home, I, we, this, the family setup is like, yeah. there's nothing like this. <laughs> Do you concur with, uh, with, with joy that parents have a duty that they have upscored? Yes, I, I concur with that. Even I can give just an example. There's mm -hmm. a day, uh, I met a 13 year old mm -hmm. girl. She, okay, I work in the hospital. So when she came, she had some pains here and there. And then when I just inquired, she's talking about, uh, she had started her period. That was her first time. She didn't know what was happening. She was not, she didn't have, they live with the father. The, he's a single parent. So this girl is not comfortable to talk to the parent. Even the dad is also not comfortable to talk to the issue to share with the daughter. So when she just came in, I saw she, she doesn't have that knowledge, which is very important at that stage. So if the parents are not uh, in that position, who do we leave this girl? Who will talk to this young girl? Mm -hmm. So if you go to school, you get a good number of them. So by that, we'll st still give them the right information. We'll talk to them. Then they get to ask questions. We share, and they go home. Maybe they are with that. even they are better than the way we met them. And so, uh, the government has started some pro some projects, and also some some companies chipped in. I remember uh, even the the first lady has been on the forefront in ensuring that. Uh, the girl child is uh, empowered, not only empowered, is that uh, is taken care of. And some of these projects do not get to the remote, remote, remote parts of the country, like Kamabe, as you say. Kilifi and Kwale are also leading uh, the, 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 the statistics with so many, so many young pregnant ladies. If the government can narrow it down from the national government to the county government. Mm -hmm. I think it can be easy because the moment the national government starts this program, mm -hmm. if 
the county government does not pick it or does not put in more effort, mm -hmm. it will die at the national level. Hence, increasing the numbers at the county level. And that is one factor that if we can all think about mm -hmm. from the grassroots level to the national government, mm -hmm. I think it can save us big time from all these teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. and, and Lucy, the government, uh, via the Ministry of Health, did talk about there is an uptick of contraceptives by these teenage yeah. girls. Yes. And it said it is illegal. Of course, you're not supposed to be using contraceptives unless you're an adult. But looking at the statistics is that a lot are seeking healthcare providers for contraceptives, which yeah. the government says it's highly illegal and uh, they have dire consequences for those who are arrested. I don't know whether I've never come up across those who have been arrested and prosecuted. But it is very tough on teenage use of or contraceptives, contraceptives. Mm -hmm. but the cases that we are seeing yes do you think that perhaps this is something that, uh, that they should be a little bit open to explore yes because they are using mm -hmm. yes yes they are using they come to the hospital even the, without the knowledge of the parents ah. they'll come they tell you I have a boyfriend mm -hmm. and we're they, they are practicing the act of sex mm -hmm. so they, they they are coming to seek advice from you mm -hmm. which for uh, which family planning do you think I can use mm -hmm. and maybe you inquire have you talked to your parent no I can't mm -hmm. because if she or he knows I'll be in trouble mm -hmm. so if the parent would understand like this this need mm -hmm. and the girls knows she's engaging herself with the boy the, in this act mm -hmm. uh, this will still increase the number of teenage pregnancies mm -hmm. why don't we just open up and accept that there's a need for these young girls we just guide them you just counsel them you just talk to them tell them even if you're using this contraceptive mm -hmm. don't forget about other things mm -hmm. like a sexually transmitted transmitted infections mm -hmm. so because if you just give them contra uh, contraceptive method mm -hmm. they think it's just a free will now you can just go and practice and have unsafe sex mm -hmm. so even if you're giving contraceptive don't forget about issues of other STIs mm -hmm. yes and when we are talking about uh, teenage pregnancies we are also looking at uh, some of retrogressive cultural practices like early marriages. They are rampant in Homer Bay, they are rampant in Kilifi, they are rampant in, uh, in northeastern provinces, the, the, the larger um, uh, uh, northeastern. And that is something that we can say it's adding to the problem that we already have. We even have FGM, early marriages. But the society is a little bit quiet on this. And also the government is not quite tough on this. When we talk of uh, cultural practices, mm -hmm. we still have this komatanga going yeah. down. And we have area chief, assistant chiefs. What are they doing about this? Are they leaving all this to the parents? If they still encourage these cultural practices, mm -hmm. then it means we are still going to have higher numbers. Mm -hmm. If we can all agree to stop teenage pregnancies, then early marriages, uh, disco matanga, these cultural practices, I think should be looked into with a lot of seriousness. Uh -huh. And uh, still talking on of, of, of um, these cases, a lot of cases are the ones that are not reported. We might have the statistics, yes, but it's not the true reflection of yeah. the situation on the ground. Meaning, the situation could be a little bit uh, bad in yeah. some counties in, uh, when it comes to teenage pregnancies, pregnancy. uh, SGBV mm -hmm. as well. But the cases are not reported. They don't even give confidence to somebody perhaps who have had uh, the, the retrograde, has, has gone through some of the retrogressive cultural practices that we're talking about. They are not reported, so they just, they're just there. And the government, perhaps, and other agencies uh, should be a little bit keener on this because if you don't know how to report, yes, yeah. indeed, the Kenya Police Service has talked about a gender desk in every police station, but really, we, do, we should be seeing a lot happening. If we have these statistics, mm -hmm. we also expect to be having a higher number of cases that are not only, are not only reported, but are sorted out. Yeah. No, to talk on that, eh? you will get to see there are some girls uh, who are defiled some are raped 
and this one will lead. Sometimes they go, they talk to the parent, they tell them what has happened. Some will go report to the police, yes, but what will happen after that? They'll go back, the, chief, the, the police maybe, or the chief or whoever they report to, they just go tell them, please go talk it out at home, go sort it out. Even if they go, then there's issues even of corruption, even involving such serious matter as teenage pregnancy. So maybe one person is arrested, one they, they, yeah, they, they are arrested. And then after a period of a few days, you'll still see them outside there. And next time you'll hear, they have defiled another girl. Mm -hmm. Why don't the law follow this guy up to the end? If they need to be put and locked up, I think that will be a good thing. So the government should be a bit serious on this. Maybe, and are you, uh, you maybe to just something? to add yes. on what uh, Lucy has said, or uh, we should use the law to punish rapists so that it doesn't come back, it doesn't rotate. Because the moment you set this guy free, it means the same will happen to another girl tomorrow. Maybe it's a relative. The rapist yeah. is a relative. Mm -hmm. You report the matter to the police. You are told. Uh, can you go and square it as a family? You've not stopped what happened. You've not solved the issue. You are still, uh, it's like you are encouraging the act to go on. You are still encouraging the guy to continue doing this, knowing very well that there is nothing that is going to happen. Yes, and, and still on the same, uh, we are looking at uh, some of the cases mm -hmm. are perpetuated by people this little girls mm -hmm. know very well yeah incidentally coincidentally some are even relatives yeah true the cases mm -hmm. um like in uh, parts of uh, northern kenya they sit around some mm -hmm. sit on a baraza mm -hmm. they discuss they mm -hmm. have uh, a few goats or a few cows mm -hmm. and then uh, the matter is rested not even giving justice okay. for someone who has been abused but these cases, despite the fact that we have a, a robust judicial system, they never see the light of day. It happens. And, and the parents, mm -hmm. are, uh, this, mm -hmm. these young ladies, some have parents. Yeah, they do. Yes. Uh, some of these parents would really wish to have justice. But again, it still comes back. There are threats. If you continue with the case, if I come back, I'll finish you. This infringed fear in the minor parents, maybe the background of this young girl is very humble. They don't know who to approach. They don't know who to request support from. Mm -hmm. So you get it so hard as a parent to continue with the case and you are pushed to even withdraw the case. After settling the matter at home, this girl still has the memory. What do you think happens even with the performance of this girl in school? Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what, what do you think happens if this girl sees the person, meets the person on the way? It's so hard. So to avoid all this trauma, I think we should urge, ask the government, both the national government and the county government and the national police service mm -hmm. to help by use of law to punish these people. Do you believe the policies that we have and the laws that we have are keen on ensuring that we do away with cases of abuse for our teenage girls and boys? There is a percentage, a good percentage, a good percentage mm -hmm. that still we don't trust. Mm -hmm. National police service should be on the forefront because they know very well these girls still has a future. She still needs to go far. What if now She's sad. She's home. The memory comes back every day. At the end of the day, stress. The girl will run into depression mm -hmm. because depression has no limit. It has no age. I think the best thing we can do, both parents and the government, is to use the law the right way mm -hmm. without favoring the wrong person or the offender. Yeah, and, and uh, looking at uh, your, your program of providing sanitary pads to yeah. um, uh, 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 our young girls, it's a, 
it's, it's a project that you, you've been with. I'm quite sure when you started, you started out perhaps a, a, a small number. Yeah. But when people knew that you are doing this, a lot of people came in, kindly help us. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you guys are going through? I know, you know, there are even logistical challenges. That <laughs> yes, you... that, I think those are the main challenges okay. of financial, you know, financial stability so that you can be able to sustain this program. Mm -hmm. We need finances. Mm -hmm. We need, yeah, we need to have our money right like you know you have like 20 schools you need to visit in a month mm -hmm. uh, you are working with a number and you have the number of pads you want to give each girl mm -hmm. sometimes you, you just sit and you think oh where are we going to get this mm -hmm. how we're going to manage all this number mm -hmm. and that's yeah that's why uh, we we're here sometimes we want to we wish we can partner with other organization other um, well wishers those people who feel like when you touch this level of this girl uh, they say once sometimes when you educate a girl, mm -hmm. you educate an entire community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you keep that in mind. This is your sister. This is your daughter. So I wish all of us can just come together, hold her, we hold hands. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm thinking there's this issue of the government supplies uh, the mostly the male condoms. Mm -hmm. They're all over. In, when you go to the hospital, mm -hmm. you'll know there's their dispensers. You'll go somewhere and you get your condoms and you go use. Why can't we have such uh, sanitary? dispensers area where a girl maybe she's going to school she knows maybe tomorrow is my day I'll, and she knows she's confident like i'll go i'll find a sanitary towel i'll continue with my studies mm -hmm. and yeah unbothered so they don't have to talk to maybe the border, the border guys there are some maybe uncles or other relatives who will still take advantage of them mm -hmm. so they just focus on their studies mm -hmm. i feel we should do something about that well, that's an, it's a very interesting and a very good way to bring it out that uh, we can have dispensers or they know yeah. before, that if you go somewhere you can just pick them up just yeah. like you see in the developed countries there's somewhere you go and pick, pick. your newspapers yes. yeah. you go and pick uh, some free freebies yeah. which would actually help yeah, I feel. Then, yeah, yes. I feel like sanitary towel. It's. I know it's a basic need to yeah. every girl mm -hmm. who is at adolescence from adolescent age. So why can't we find ways just to avail it to our girls? And and uh, speaking of statistics, we've had the statistics of some of uh, girls who uh, uh, have been abused and others a lot more millions who are in dire need of sanitary pads. Yes. What? What statistics are we looking at? How many girls have you been able to help or how many schools are in your program as we speak? Okay, so far we've, uh, when we, uh, we were looking in the sub-county, mm -hmm. but as from this, uh, this year they have opened their schools, mm -hmm. we are planning to go to the whole of, at least we cover the whole of the Komabe County. Mm -hmm. So we have a great demand for the sanitary towels. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so any person who is outside there who might feel this, something we are doing and they feel in the heart that they want to be part of this kindly mm -hmm. they are welcome they can just tap we have uh, our drop up a drop point eh? mm -hmm. it's at beryl medical center it's mm -hmm. under gold we provide yeah that's where we we have them because the the program is supported by Beryl's Medical Center at a God will provide. Uh -huh. and, yes. and Lucy, perhaps uh, to fortify what uh, Joy has talked about uh -huh. on, in terms of uh, uh, the challenges and how has the community uh -huh. embraced this project? Because I'm quite sure there are some people who say, ah, I should help here. Yeah. And as she's talking about drop of points as well. Community accepted this initiative with the smiles I might say mm -hmm. because it has reduced a budget to some parents and guardians and they they would always ask you to come to schools near them mm -hmm. they would always ask you to support the kids who are in most need who most need the sanitary towel even if it's a pack two packets three packets mm -hmm. and for sustainability, we don't just give sanitary towels and forget about these girls. Mm -hmm. We are hoping to keep it running throughout the year so that we know in school A we have 246 girls. Mm -hmm. We need three packets per girl for the whole term so that you don't give it the first month the second month, then the third month, what, what will happen the third month? That is our question. If we give it the first and the second month, what will happen the third month? Is she going back to the border border operator? Is she going back to the fisher folks? Because fish folks in Homer Bay County 
they take after the Buddha Buddha guys. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at it. How are we going to sustain these girls so that they don't go back to the old ways they, they, they were using to get sanitary towels? Mm -hmm. We are also asking the community to help us, not only by identifying girls, who are in need, mm -hmm. but also to support us. We have friends who would see this noble cause and they'd be like, I have one packet, I have a bail. We are not choosy. Mm -hmm. We are not setting standards. We are not having a minimum number that we are working with. Mm -hmm. If you want to support us, mm -hmm. if you want to join us, mm -hmm. uh, we accept. If you are, it is one packet, we appreciate it because it will go a whole month. This girl will not stay three days home mm -hmm. because of her periods. She'll stay in school. And if you calculate the number of days, depending on the flow, uh, there is a lady with a heavy flow. Mm -hmm. She can even flow for four days. Mm -hmm. That means in one time she's going to miss school for 12 days. These 12 days, if you calculate it into her education input, it's like she's wa she's wasting a whole month. Yes. So we are trying so hard with the help of our friends. Mm -hmm. If we get partners, if we get good friends like you, yes. we will keep all these girls throughout in school. Uh, uh, that's true because actually, yeah. Uh, uh, before you add on the same, mm -hmm. I, I remember in our in our WhatsApp group uh, uh, that we formed a primary school uh, alumna, mm -hmm. we have something we call pad marathon or short form for padthon mm -hmm. such that we contribute any amount of money within mm -hmm. a duration of like five hours yes. and it's geared towards a pad for our former school back in my home county mm -hmm. so some some of the gestures at least we have some people in the media who can be able to disseminate this information mm -hmm. and at least most of the people in that group have either their businesses or they they they, they, they have right. they're employed like me and that is what I could call the sustainability. Yeah, but sure. looking at your organization, uh, the sustainability could be a challenge because you will continue receiving more yeah. and more schools that yeah. would like to be assisted. How do we sustain this problem? Because as you said, mm -hmm. is that you haven't found a strategic partner mm -hmm. and the government has not yet chipped in as you would have wanted, but the program has to continue. Okay, just, uh, okay, even on a note, just maybe you can invite your friends, eh? mm -hmm. they can just come, maybe even a, a one month, they can support what we are doing in Homer Bay County. Mm -hmm. And also on 22nd of February, mm -hmm. we launched this program just to make it official, mm -hmm. and we invited all the partners. Uh, we told them we are open. We talked about it, we talked about the girls. So uh, members around Homer Bay County know what we are doing. But now we are here, in a, it's good you invited us here. We are calling upon anyone. Uh, so they, they feel they be part of this. Because sustainability, for now, we still have to work with what we have. Mm -hmm. Because we, we don't want it to be, we just do away with it. So we, for now, we still have to work hard and work with what we have. Mm -hmm. And we pray that tomorrow we'll get someone, will give us maybe one bell, one carton, so that we continue. But now we're here, we're calling upon anyone who feel they need to support this, they're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yes. And because of the interest of time, ladies, I'm going to give you each uh, a minute and a half, a minute and a half, so that you may make your appeal. Because what you're doing is, is something, it's quite a noble gesture, that a lot of Kenyans would want to help. Mm -hmm. And you might not know, there might be somebody who is watching, and um, may decide to give you a shot in the arm, kindly. You think your camera is camera two? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for those friends, partners, organizations, business people who would want to support us, we are so open. You can find us on Facebook, Beryl's Medical Center Sanitary Towels Aid, under Beryl's Medical Center. And we also have uh, numbers that you can call. The numbers that we are going to give, if you call them, you will get us and we can organize. If somebody is far and he or she wants to Mm -hmm. drop, send, we can always faster. That is something that we have to mm -hmm. respond very fast. Exactly, you can tell them exactly where they can even drop off. Uh, we have a drop off uh, point at Beryl's Medical Center in Oyugi's town along Kisu, Kise Kisumu Highway mm -hmm. next to Winimam Hotel. That is the pin or the location. You can also get us on Facebook and uh, the name Beryl's Medical Center Sanitary Towels Aid. Mm -hmm. There is also a number that they can call. One of them is 0725 490 mm -hmm. And the other number is 0724 yes, yes, yes. 
they can still call the 0724, though it's pinned 0724 907 uh, It's on the Facebook page. Even if they can tap still under Beres Medical Center, they can still get led to the drop off point. Mm -hmm. And so, what I can add them, uh, mm -hmm. just think about your sister, think about your mother, uh, think about any lady who is at that age. What would you feel uh, kindly? Just have that heart to give. It'll, it'll change a lot. I'm a woman, I'm a lady, I know. So if you can get someone who can support on that, you'll always be appreciating them. They might, you might, they might not come and tell you, thank you, give me a pad, but a girl somewhere in reserve uh, who has not been having access to this pad, they'll be really grateful. Indeed, uh, thank you so much. And um, of course, you've heard that the ladies is that in any way that you can help, let's uh, do this. Let's help the ladies get the sanitary pads and also let's uh, follow the law which says that everybody as a Kenyan you are entitled to enjoying all the laws and everything that is in Kenya as long as you follow the law. So abuse, cases of abuse, let's report cases of abuse. Let us chip in where we can and uplift our ladies uh, so that, of course, as she said, think about your sister, think about your mom. It's a noble gesture that will move a long way into assisting a lady and consequently a community. As we say, if you empower a lady, you've empowered the community. That's where we put a cap on uh, this first hour. We've been talking about uh, teenage pregnancies and assisting when it comes to matter sanitary and also being keen uh, to digress the retrogressive cultural practices that we have that are only de detrimental to their growth and development. That's where we wrap it up. But uh, don't go away. We are coming in with uh, another panel of experts we are discussing matters politics a lot has been happening in the country if you ask me when we're looking at uh, uh, the race for the running mate and also IEBC has a lot of challenges in the coming days discussing that in a bit don't go away